Good morning, students. We begin today's class with the poem, The Thought Fox by Ted Hughes. Let us first look at a brief bio of the poet Ted Hughes. Ted Hughes was born in 1930 in Yorkshire into a middle class family. His father was a carpenter by profession and after school he did social service in the Royal Air Force. Later he earned a scholarship at Pembroke College, Cambridge. After that he worked uh, in various capacities. You can see that he worked as a rose gardener, a night watchman, a script writer and teacher. He married Sylvia Plath in 1957, 56 exactly, and he moved to the US after that and he gave very, various lectures at various universities there. Later they moved back to Britain. And we all know that uh, there was the suicide of Sylvia Plath in 1963 that hauled Ted Hughes into a lot of uh, controversies. However, he was honored with Poet Laureateship in 1984 and he held the position till his death in 1998. Let us look at some of his major works now. Some of his major works are The Hawk in the Rain. Now The Hawk in the Rain was published in 1957 and this is the collection from which the poem the Thought Fox is taken. The Birthday Letters was a worse memoir for Sylvia Plath and this uh, to an extent set right some of the controversies, I mean not set right actually, it uh, resolved some of the controversies that cropped up in the wake of her suicide. Now some of his other works are Lupercal, Wardwo, Crow, Moortown and Wolf Watching. He also tried his hand at children's writing. The Iron Man is a book of that genre. Now, Ted Hughes is known as a nature poet and it's not exactly a nature poet. We can rather call him an animal poet. He utilizes animal vitality in all his poems, in most of his poems. And in fact, the Thought Fox is, his, is the first of his animal poems. And he uses uh, violent, unusual phrases to delve deeper into more complex symbolic realms. We'll look at all these aspects of uh, his animal poems or nature poems uh, soon after we finish with a detailed analysis of the poem. He, ha he utilizes a lot of forceful and striking imagery and his poems are not confined to limits of formal meter or rhyme. Now let's get into the poem, The Thought Fox. The Thought Fox is metaphorically about the composition of poetry. If you look at the title of the poem itself, you can see that the Thought Fox is not an ordinary fox, it's a Thought Fox. So there's something special about this. This poem also moved, moves in this particular double layered manner. This poem is about a fox, obviously enough. That's what Hugh says. It's obviously about the fox. But a fox that is both a fox and not a fox. That's what Hugh says about it. It's not just any fox. It's something special. And what we see when we read through this poem is that the fox comes alive each time somebody reads this poem. That is how sensuous the description of the poem is, of the foxes actually. So let's go into the poem now. The Thought Fox I imagine this midnight's moment's forest. Something else is alive beside the clock's loneliness and this blank page where my fingers move. Through the window I see no star, something more near though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Midnight moment's forest? This is no ordinary forest here. Like we spoke of in the beginning of the session, this poem is about the composition of poetry. 
So the poet is here at his desk ready to type out a poem and what we see here is a midnight moments forest. This midnight moments forest actually is a metaphor for the imagination of the poet. Now we have here in the first stanza an evocation of an image where there is darkness and loneliness and the poet is at his desk and the clo clock is ticking by and the blank page is ready for the, to receive the poem. Through the window I see no star, something more near. So the window is dark, so there's complete dark, it's a starless night. But something more near, though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. So there's a something here that's entering here. So it's a disturbance that is not in the external darkness, but the disturbance is in the internal darkness, that is the internal mind or imagination of the poet. The darkness is not just external. The poet becomes aware of a presence, of a stirring, of a movement. We are not given a, a concrete image, maybe a visual image or an olfactory sense or anything of that sort. It's just a stirring, it's just a something here at this point, only a something. It's just a stirring. And there are no clear outlines, its presence is just felt and not seen. And you see, we are already into the two stanzas of the poem and there's no clear outline, just a blurred image and actually and only indistinct features of something that is going to come. The poet's task now is to coax out whatever the stirring is into formlessness, into form actually, out of the formlessness. So the poet has to do this with his perceptivity of language. The next stanza begins, cold, delicately as the dark snow, a fox's nose touches twig, leaf. Now the, the third stanza actually brings us a slight or maybe a fragmentary image of the fox. A half hidden image here of snow falling against the trees. The snow is dark, it's darkness outside, so the snow is falling and this image of the dark snowflakes are evoked to evoke the physical reality of the fox's nose that is cold, dark and damp. And if you pay attention here to these two lines, you can see that the structure of the simile is inverted. It's not exactly, the poet does not say a fox's nose as the dark snow or a fox's nose like the dark snow. It just says in the beginning, cold delicately as the dark snow and then it introduces the fox's nose. So the uh, structure of the simile is inverted. First you get the description and then the fox's nose. You find here a twig, a leaf, the fox's nose touching the twig, touching the leaf and it moves on and it blurs the distinctness of the fox. Okay. The inverted, the inverted form, form of the, of the simile, simile here, here is, is actually, actually deliberate. deliberate. There's this, this withholding, withholding of, of the, subject. the subject. It's not, it's not immediately, immediately presented. presented. So when you so withhold, when you withhold this, this, what happens, what happens is, is the, the distinctness of the, of the fox, fox is, is blurred. blurred. So that, so the, that fox the fox emerges, emerges very, very slowly. slowly. Gradually, 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 gradually we get, get to see, to see parts, parts of, the, of the, fox the fox one by one. By one. Now we have come, come into contact, contact with the, the cold, cold damp, damp, dark, dark fox's, fox's nose. nose. It's so sensuous that description. The nose, the nose touching, touching, touching the twig, twig, the twig, the leaf. The leaf. And, then and then we see two eyes, two eyes serve, serve a, movement. a movement. That now, that now and again, and again now, and now, now set, set neat, neat prints, prints into, into the, the snow. So, so first, first we saw, we saw the, nose, the nose and now, and now we are presented, presented with two, two eyes, eyes that, that serve, serve a movement. movement. 
Now, this, now this, uh, we have, we have this, this image, image of the of fox's, fox's eyes staring, eyes staring at, at us, and, and this, this fox, fox is gradually advancing towards, towards us, us, and, and the, the same, same that, that movement, movement, that slow movement, step by step, 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 step movement, movement, is, is mimicked, mimicked here, here in the, in lines, the lines, lines too. The structure, the structure of, the of the poem exhibits a similar, similar slow, slow, gradual movement, movement when the poet says, says now, now, and again now, and now, and now. So it's Step by step, step, step that the fox, the fox is progressing, progressing sets its neat, neat sprints, sprints into, into the, the snow. snow. So the so half, the half rhymes, rhymes here. Set set neat, neat prints. prints. Half, half rhymes, rhymes. set set neat, neat prints. prints. So this, so this is, is also reflecting the movement, the movement of, the of the fox. And just, and just imagine, imagine the fox setting prints into the snow. It's paw prints. One by one into the snow, you can see that a dark silhouette of the uh, fox is there and it just sets its prints there. Between trees and warily, a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow. So you see that between the trees, you can see the footprints, the paw prints of the fox that is there in between the trees on the snow and the f fox is not yet clear. What we see is an indistinct image of the body. It's only a shadow now because it's a silhouette against the snow. And this silhouette is dark and you just have a, a blurred image of the fox. We have fragmentary vision. We first saw the nose and then we saw the eyes and now we see prints in the snow and then we come across the silhouette of the fox. Even now, the fox is not completely visible. It's a lame shadow. Just imagine a fox that is warily stepping forward through the darkness of the forest and it's just raised one foot and it's pausing in mid-air and it looks almost limp there. So a la lame shadow as it warily moves on, checking the terrain and then all of a sudden of a body that is bold to come across clearings. You see that in the beginning it is just slow and then there's a sudden movement here, a violent movement here, a quick flash across a clearing in the forest. And if you check the structure of the poem, you'll see that the f this is a run-on line where the stanza breaks and you see that's a clearing between the lines. You see of a body that is bold to come and then there's a gap there similar to a clearing in the forest. A gap between the two stanzas and across the clearings an eye, a widening, deepening greenness. So in the beginning, we know that it's two eyes and two eyes serve a movement was what the poet said in the beginning. Now he says, an eye, an eye. Now it's so close to us. The fox has just leapt up in front of us. We see uh, the eye as a single green glare. And this greenness here, this widening, deepening greenness is uh, reflecting the vitality of the fox. This vitality of the fox again is not just the vitality of the fox, but it is the vitality of the poem. The poem is coming to a whole here. It's becoming a rounded experience, brilliantly, concentratedly coming about its own business. So the poem is bringing out, the poem has actually succeeded in capturing the essence of the fox or the essence of the stirring of the idea that had initially just given a glimpse into the imagination of the poet. Then we see, till with a sudden, sharp, hot stink of fox, it enters the dark hole of the head. The fox was first gradually approaching and then Suddenly, it just flashed across the clearing in the forest and now with sudden, sharp, hot stink of fox, it enters the dark hole of the head. So there's a visual logic here of the fox jumping through the eyes of the poet into the lair of the head of the imagination of the poet. Through the eyes, the fox has entered into the head of the poet and now it's safe there. It's safe from extinction. The poem is complete. 
in the beginning it was just indistinct but now it's distinct it's clear the excitement and power of achieved vision has been created the window is starless still the clock ticks the page is printed so we see the calm there in the last two lines where the external reality has not changed at all we saw a midnight's forest we saw uh, the trees the twigs the leaves the dark snow the fox's nose two eyes his movement shadow everything but all this is on a totally different realm here the external reality is that the poet is sitting at his desk and he is ready to write his poem and the physical reality is the same as before we saw in the beginning in the second stanza that there is no star in the window and what we see here in the last stanza is the star window is starless still it's still starless in reality nothing has changed outside there is still darkness and the clock is still ticking by but earlier we saw that there was a blank page but now the page is printed what we find here is the fox is the poem and the poem is the fox it is an amazing achievement of poetic craft that we find in this short six stanza poem the thought fox now the thought fox when we take uh, take an example of the title itself we see that it is not an ordinary fox like we have mentioned earlier it's a different kind of fox there's this juxtaposition of the abstract and the con uh, concrete here the thought which is abstract fox which is concrete and then there's this internal and external reality one which is abstract and the other concrete and the imagination the imagination that is abstract and the night which is more concrete and the poem which we find is being composed all along in this poem is abstract and the fox is its counterpart that is concrete so this juxtaposition of abstract concrete is there all through this poem and that's what poetry is all about it's an organic experience which signifies in levels more than one in multiple levels of meanings we can find to a poem and this poem shows us a reality of a fox approaching in uh, the imagination and the imaginative creative uh, creation of a poem we find that the poem progresses through vivid imagery the midnight forest in the beginning that's the first image that is evoked and then there's the lonely clock the blank page the starless sky all this creates the setting at first and then in the imagination there's this half hidden image of the fox's nose that touches twig and leaf and then the dark snow brushing against the trees and then the eyes the footprints the sharp sudden stink now the sudden sharp stink short syllab monosyllabic words here actually give us a very vivid sensuous description of the fox the fox is not just a visual image here it's an olfactory image we get the stink of the fox the stink the odor of the fox it's not very agreeable here it's unfavorable stink of the fox that comes here of an animal that comes here and that creates a rounded experience of the fox and in the uh, final image of this poem we find that the po page is printed the poet actually employs a lot of poetic techniques in this poem he uses the uh, monosyllables that we have just seen like a sudden sharp stink of fox short short monosyllables and the uh, rhythm like and now and now and now and varying ry rhyming patterns sound effect all of this create a uh, a sense of the approach of the animal like how we saw that the animal approached very gradually in the beginning and later it was very quick and then it jumped into the poet's head and it's safe there 
So the poet uses alliteration, imagery. Alliteration, you must have noticed there, sudden, sharp, sting, s, 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 that sound comes up again and again. Half rhymes, internal rhymes are all techniques that the poet uses to create and uh, to bring out the vitality of the fox in this poem. So now let us move on and look at the question of vitality and violence in the poems of Ted Hughes. And this particular poem, uh, we see that in all the poems of Ted Hughes, he has a lot of violence and vitality coming up. And the violence in this poem is not uh, actually very violent. Usually his poems like Pike and Jaguar actually bring out terrifying images of the inner violence that is present in the human consciousness. That's what he's trying to project through his poems, the uh, vibrancy, the vitality or the violence that's there in the animal world, which he feels is dormant in the human mind because it wants to conform to the external uh, reality of civilization and modernity. Uh, but in this poem, The Thought Fox, we actually come across the violence in a more subtle form. The violence is actually a vitality in this poem, life which is throbbing that is uh, reflected in this poem, depicted in this poem with the fox. And what Hugh says is that it is a supreme achievement that he has did. We all agree because this fox is not just another fox. It's it's very special fox because whenever somebody takes this poem and reads it, it's so sensuous that this, poem, uh, this fox comes alive it just wakes up from somewhere and starts walking towards the person who is reading this poem. So with that, we come to an end of today's session. And I hope you have experienced the vitality of the fox that Hughes has created for you. Thank you.